viewers of YouTube, it's RS Mario here bringing you another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit different than my normal Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. You know, usually if I'm doing a video like this, I'm talking about uh, the leaks from Riddler Q or from Centro, or there's like a theory about the story, or there's some news that has come out about Pokemon, like a new trailer, new feature, what have you. Uh, that's usually what I do in my videos. That's not going to be this particular video today. It's going to be a little bit more of a discussion video. Now, if you want more of my usual Pokemon video, check out the video that I dropped yesterday. That one basically has all the aforementioned stuff in it. Takato Utsunomiya, uh, the chief operating officer of the Pokemon Company International, uh, had an interview recently. And there's a part of the interview that everybody has kind of been talking about in the Pokemon community for the last couple of days where they talk about increasing the quality of Pokemon games without messing with the release cadence. So of course, if you wanna continue getting videos like this or any of my other videos for that matter, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that good stuff that YouTube requires you to do to continue getting videos from me. Follow me at twitter.com slash rsmario128. Like the video tweet, share the video tweet, and I will shout you out like today's lucky contestant, Josefina, or Josefina, <laughs> however you pronounce that. Um, Josefina, uh, she liked my video tweet, and so she gets the shout out for today. So if you do that, I will shout you out in the intro to my videos as well. So, all right, let's get on into the video. So, Pokemon Company having conversations about how to ensure game quality with regular releases. So I'm thinking that this is actually coming in reaction to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and how that release went. So, of course, you know what I'm saying? You all know how the release of Scarlet and Violet went. <laughs> it was rocky at best, okay? Uh, I, I've even done videos about the glitches in Scarlet and Violet um, where I actually kind of use a glitch to my advantage in the game. Um, there's been tons of conversation. And honestly, the quality of Pokemon games have kind of begun to slide and it's not all because of the release schedule. I mean, the other part of it is that they're also, you know, you know, the Nintendo's finally catching up in power with the other game consoles. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Nintendo's got an HD console now. They're probably going to do a 4K console with the next one or at least a more powerful HD console with the next Switch. Um, so with the more power uh, and the more complicated the game console and and the technology happens to be, you know, the more Game Freak has to do in order to make a Pokemon game. You know what I'm saying? Because you look at, like, you know, Pokemon, uh, um, you know, Sword and Shield. And, I mean, you, you can see it all the way back in that game where the quality kind of started to slide. The the, the infamous low-res uh, uh, low tree that pissed everybody in the world off. To, they kicked off a massive hate for the Pokemon games. Well, not Pokemon games in general, but at least for Sword and Shield. I mean, shoot, you can even go all the way back to, like, X and Y and see some kind of slides in quality there, you know, with, like, uh, as far as, like, frame rate and stuff like that, you know, because, again, they were more, they, you know, they were working on more of a complicated 3D game, you know, and that was back on the 3DS. So it, it's been a long time coming, you know what I'm saying? You know, they, they should have been having this conversation, like, at least a couple games ago. But here we are, though. According to Takato Utsunomiya, the chief operating officer of the Pokemon Company, conversations are being had about how to keep up the series' regular releases of games while maintaining quality. While Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were received from a gameplay standpoint, were well, were well received, were well received, Wow, man, so many W words in there. Were well received. <laughs> From a gameplay standpoint, uh, things came to a head last year when some fans expressed disappointment from the technical level. Uh, performance and glitches were a problem in particular. Some believe that part of the problem affecting Pokemon games came down to the release schedule. Game Freak often puts out at least one game a year. So Utsunomiya had this to say to a group uh, in an interview during the Pokemon World Championships. I think in general, if you look at the past, uh, the path we've taken up 
until now has been this consistent release. Always regularly releasing products on a fixed kind of cadence. You might say always having these products able to be introduced and new experiences for our customers and that's how we've operated up until now. I think we're still operating in that way but there's more and more conversations as the development environments change about how to continue to do this while making sure they're ins ensuring real quality products are being introduced. So basically, now people are saying that this is them saying that they're thinking about slowing down development time, which that doesn't sound like what he said there. <laughs> it sounds like they're saying, how can we increase the quality of our games without decreasing the quantity of our games? Um, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of what it sounds like he said. And maybe delaying games or changing the schedule is an option, but they still want that same cadence. So at least every year or every two years. Now, uh, I, I think I have a solution here. All right. One would be hiring more people. Because I think uh, Game Freak is like, I think they make, uh, they're about 100 about a hundred head at that studio so they have about a little over a hundred staff so hire more people i mean right now the other big game dev conversation going on is larry and studios and um baldur's gate 3 and everyone's talking about how good baldur's gate 3 is and then devs are like you can't really expect us to do that because baldur's gate 3 had like six years of development and three years of daggone early access and a 400 man studio and all that kind of stuff. So maybe it's time for Game Freak to kind of look at a studio like that and, and hire in some more people. I mean, because I can understand why like smaller studios can't do that, but like Pokemon is the biggest franchise on the planet. I think y'all can kick Game Freak some money so that they could hire some more people. <laughs> You know, but hire in some more people. Uh, this way, you can have uh, th three teams. You know what I'm saying? You can have two main development teams that develop mainline Pokemon games. You know, one of them can be the young guys that can do more experimental stuff like your, your Let's Go, Legends, Arceus type of stuff. And then the other team can do mainline regular Pokemon games. You know, they're, they're the more experienced guys. They've been there for a while. They do mainline games. And then the smaller team, the smaller team can do like DLC. All right, so this way you have like a mainline release, like, you know, Scarlet and Violet. And then the next year, the DLC that the DLC team was making will drop. But this whole time, the other team has been developing their game too. So that way, by the time, you know, all of this stuff's out of the system, the the next game comes out technically two years later. So one year, main game, one year, DLC for main game, next year, experimental game. Next, then, then after that, DLC for experimental game. Because the DLC team is always working on DLC. And those guys could be like absolute newbies. Newbies you done brought in straight out of college. You know what I'm saying? You know, something like that. Probably led by a veteran. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe they could be like older, older guys. Like really old people that work in and that, that are on their way out. And so they just work on DLC. Either way. You know what I'm saying? Or the other way they could do it is they could look at Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty has like... I f damn. I feel like Call of Duty's got like four or five studios working on just this one franchise. All right, because there's Sledgehammer, uh, there is Treyarch, uh, there's, I think Infinity Ward is still there, or what's left of Infinity Ward is still there. Uh, and then I think they have at least one or two support studios that kind of help Sledgehammer on Warzone. But the three main studios also make Call of Duty games. So there's usually a Sledgehammer game then uh, Treyarch, they make the uh, the Black Ops slash Cold War games. And then, of course, Infinity War makes the remakes of the Modern Warfare games. 
And so then they just cycle. You know what I'm saying? One year there's a Treyarch game. Next year there's a Sledgehammer game. Next year there's an Infinity War game. And they could do that. I mean, they have Ilka. <laughs> Say what you want. BDSP made numbers. You know what I'm saying? They have Ilka, so maybe Ilka can do a game every other year or every two years or whatever. There are options that they have to do to, to make this better. Um, you know what I'm saying? You know, the other, but mainly just hire more people. All right. If you want to continue the yearly release schedule, they got to hire some more people, man. They got to give Game Freak some more people in those studio in that studio. That way they can continue to do this because it's only going to get more complicated from here. All right. Because uh, with the more complicated game gaming and game consoles and game developing gets, it's only going to get harder. All right. And people are only going to expect more and more as far as graphical quality and if they can't pull that off, I don't know, man. I don't know. Tell me what you think down in the comments down below. I know this was a weird video, but I, I couldn't really fit this into the Pokemon video I had yesterday. So I decided to go ahead and, and, and do a kind of like its own video. I also have a video I want to do about the competitive situation when it comes to Pokemon. That, that might be something I do as well. Because, I mean, there's a lot of competitive Pokemon conversations coming out of worlds uh, about things that you know they should do a lot of people got disqualified because found out that their pokemon were gin so that might be another discussion i do sometime this week but that's about it like comment subscribe and as always people keep it real